So what about variations between frontalis muscles? Now there's actually wide variation between different people's foreheads. You get variations both within the different sexes, but also between the sexes. Characteristically, male foreheads are bigger and they have stronger muscles. And in particular, the lateral aspect of the frontalis often goes much higher up into towards the scalp or even into the hairline. Now this becomes an issue if you are like most of us, we're very used to treating female faces. And I certainly, remember when I first started injecting being caught out with a couple of my male patients because I would inject them at least in the midsection more like a female so I wouldn't have elevated their eyebrows but I'd forget about the muscle going on up here in the hairline and then they'd come back with strange little extra lines or horns they would sometimes be called and this is just because we're too used to focusing on the midsection which is more common in females and we forget about higher up with the men. In fact I've got two examples here with lovely Dela and Dela, <laughs> Dave and Layla. Together we call them Dela. So just observe the difference in the total length of the frontalis muscle for Dave compared with Layla. If you raise eyebrows up, so her activity is to here and here. Whereas if you look at, if I place the same area for Dave, you'd find I'm missing out almost a third of his muscle, which is act active all the way up here into the scalp. And that's the classic difference between male and female and why so many men after their first Botox treatment have little active horns higher up in their foreheads. And it's because we're too used to treating females, which across the world are 90% of aesthetic patients.